Chapter 4, Section 4.3 The Graph of Rational Functions. Analyze the graph of a rational function. Step by step solution. Step 1. Factor the numerator and the denominator of r. Find the domain of the rational function. Step 2. Write r in lowest terms. Step 3. Locate the intercepts of the graph. Step 4. Test for symmetry. If r of negative x equals r of x, the function is even and its graph will be symmetric with respect to the y-axis. If r of negative x equals negative r of x, the function is odd and its graph will be symmetric with respect to the origin. Step 5. Locate the vertical asymptotes. Step 6. Locate the horizontal or oblique asymptotes. Determine points, if any, at which the graph of R intersects these asymptotes. Step 7. Graph R using a graph in utility. Step 8. Use the results obtained in steps 1 through 7 to graph R by hand. Let's analyze the graph. Step 1. Factor. So the first thing that I did was I took 2 out of the top. Next, x squared minus 2x minus 3 factors into x minus 3 times x plus 1. You'll notice that x minus 3 over x minus 3 cancels, leaving 2 times x plus 1 divided by x plus 3, where x cannot equal 3. So the domain x such that x cannot equal negative 3, x cannot equal 3. Remember, we cannot have 0 in the denominator. Step 2, lowest terms. Well, we already figured it out for lowest terms. Step 3, find intercepts. The x-intercept is when x plus 1 equals 0, and that would be negative 1, 0. y-intercept is when x equals 0. So we're going to put 0 in for x. So we have 2 times 0 plus 1 over 0 plus 3, which leaves us with 2 thirds. So the y-intercept is 0, 2 thirds. Step 4, test for symmetry. So what that means is we're going to put negative x in for x. When we do that, we notice that r of x, our original function, does not equal r of negative x. So that tells us that this function does not have symmetry. Step 5, locate vertical asymptotes or holes. The vertical asymptote is at negative 3. That is this right here. There is a hole at 3. And the reason is, is that x minus 3 is over x minus 3. And that indicates a hole. Step 6. Horizontal or oblique asymptotes. There is a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. The reason is that x squared over x squared, my m equals my n. So, 2 over 1 turns out to be my horizontal asymptote, which is just 2. Use a graphing calculator to find more points. Here is the table from my calculator. You will notice x goes from negative 8 to 4. It also shows us our errors at negative 3 and 3. Step 8, graph by hand. Let's graph a few of the things we know for sure. We know that our vertical asymptote is at x equals negative 3. We also know that there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. We know that we have an x-intercept at negative 1, 0, and a y-intercept at 0, 2 thirds. Now this is where we're going to use the table to figure out some more points. At negative 8, we have 2.8. So negative 8, 2, and a little bit above. At negative 7, we have 3. At negative 5, we have 4, and I think we can see what's happening here. Now remember, we do have a hole at x equals 3, so we should have an open circle right here. And here's the picture from my calculator and it looks the same. Here is our horizontal asymptote and our vertical asymptote 
and right in here is where we have the hole. Analyze this graph. Step 1. Factor. When I factor the top, I get 2x minus 1 times x plus 1 over x plus 3. So my domain is x such that x cannot equal negative 3. That's going to be our vertical asymptote. Step 2. Lowest terms. Well, this is lowest terms. Find the intercepts. The x-intercept is when 2x minus 1 equals 0 and x plus 1 equals 0. The y-intercept is when x equals 0. I put 0 in for all of the x's and it turns out my y-intercept is negative one-third. Step 4. Test for symmetry. Once again, I put negative x in for x and it turns out that f of x does not equal f of negative x. So there's no symmetry. Step 5. Locate vertical asymptotes or holes. Well, we know we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3 and there's no holes. Step 6. Locate horizontal or oblique asymptotes. We know there will be an oblique asymptote because this power is 1 more than this power. So what we need to do is divide x goes into 2x squared, 2x, which gives us 2x squared plus 6x. I like to change the signs and add down. Minus 5, so negative 5x minus 15. I change the signs and I end up with 14. Now we don't care what our remainder is, but our oblique asymptote will be y equals 2x minus 5. Step 7. Use a graphing calculator to find more points. Step 8. Graph by hand. Let's graph a few of the things we know. We know that there is a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. We do have some fractions, so I'm going to make every other one a number. So at x equals negative 3, we have a vertical asymptote. We have an x-intercept at 1 half, 0. We have another x-intercept at negative 1, 0. And we have a y-intercept at 0, negative 1 third. Now remember, we also have an oblique asymptote at y equals 2x minus 5. Next, I want to graph my oblique asymptote, y equals 2x minus 5. So what I did is I quickly made an xy table. So 0, negative 5, 1, negative 3. And then I wanted to find out where it crosses the x-axis. And it looks like it crosses at 2.5. So I can make a little bit better line. Remember, this line goes on forever. So does this one. Now we want to start plotting some points. At negative 4, we have negative 29, which is way down here. So I know that something is happening on the left side. I just didn't make my picture big enough, it looks like. We have at negative 2, we have 7, which is way up here. So it looks like this part is coming like that. So on the left side, we have negative 4 way down at negative 29. Then it comes up a little closer. So I'm going to guess, I'm going to kind of cut this little piece out, but I'm going to guess it's going to look like this only on the other side because of our oblique asymptote. So if this is the asymptote, it's going to look something like that. And we're going to have our x equals negative 3. And that actually is what it turns out to be on the calculator. Here's the side that we graphed really nicely. And then here is the other side. If we look at the window, I have a scaling of 5, so every hash mark is worth 5. And my y scaling is the same. Looks pretty good. Make up a rational function that might have the graph shown in, well, this figure. So if we're looking at it, a couple things we can tell is we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 5 and x equals 2. 
we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. We don't have an oblique, so that's kind of nice. We have an x-intercept at negative 2, 0, which is a multiplicity 2, because remember it just touches the x-axis. And then we have another x-intercept at 5, 0. Let's start making this equation. And I do have the answer down here, but I'm going to show you how I came up with it. The first thing we know is that our x-intercepts, which go on the top, will be x plus 2. It just touches the x-axis, and then x minus 5. In the denominator, we are going to have our vertical asymptotes. So that will be x plus 5, and then x, x minus 2. So that's great, but the only problem is, is that, let's talk about the horizontal asymptote for a moment. Remember, for the horizontal asymptote to be y equals 2, that means the numerator and the denominator have an exponent that's the same. So if I look at the top, I would have an exponent of x to the third, x squared and x. And on the bottom, I just have x squared. So I'm going to have to add in an x here, because they have to be the same. Now remember, once they're the same, the horizontal asymptote is this part. So if it's 2, it would have to be 2 over 1. So that's how I get my 2 on the top. And when we graph it, it turns out to be exactly like this picture. Analyze the graph of a rational function. Here are the rules that we just went through. If you want to pause and write these down, that would be great. Or just go back and copy what we just did. You are ready for homework 4.3.